The following Defending Our America episode is presented without commercial interruption by Sig Sauer. We can harp on little things that are minute overseas with minor criminal infractions, a, a rogue military guy being stupid and acting out of turn, and that'll be harped on for a month. But hundreds of murders along the border, 90% of the U.S. population will never yeah. hear about. I spent two years down in El Paso as an intelligence officer working on the border and working closely with state and local law enforcement. I have to, I have to admit, it was an eye-opening experience for me when I got down there. And my first thought was, if the American people knew what was going on along our border, they would be screaming for every politician's head up in Washington, D.C., because their actions or lack of action is allowing all of this to occur. Let me tell you that the, 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 the founding fathers of this country, if they were to suddenly come back and you were to say something to them like, what's that guy do for a living? He's a politician. Now, what's he do for a living? What's he <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. a politician. Where's his farm? Like, Where's yeah. his, that's all he does. It wasn't intended that way. No, they would no. be like, I, they wouldn't even understand what, the, what yeah. you're talking about. If you're a professional politician, you need to be elected. So how many people live along the border? I can tell you that it's not many. Count the number of votes that you have on the border. The people are few and far between down there. Now, those people's lives are still their, their, their lives. They're American citizens that are being killed down there. But to a professional politician, you know what you count? You count as one vote. When you get into those elected official positions, that they have this drive and this passion for what they believe in, what they want to do, what's right. And then you get those people chattering in your ear that are telling you, hey, I'm, you know, I'm a professional at getting people elected. And this is what you this is what the public wants to hear. And that's I, I mean, that pisses me off to no end when I hear people tell me what I want to hear. I'm like, how the hell do you guys know what I want to hear? Where are they doing these studies and where are they getting these facts? Because the people that I talk to don't want to know what they think we want to know. When you have 15,000 homicides in Mexico right along the Texas border in, in a short period of time, that outshines the death rate in Iraq at the height of the war. And yet, we don't look at it the same way. So you have these guys that are just across the border coming across easily, crossing through ranchers' lands, threatening and killing individuals, American citizens, shutting down parks because they're using them as a, as a thoroughfare for their trade. And I, you know, I can't imagine being a cop or a sheriff down in those areas. I mean, that's unbelievable. We talked to a, uh, a Mexican cop that went bad, and he was on the U.S. side, and, and uh, that's, he said that he was just a normal, like a municipal cop, working his shift, and vehicles pull up, block him in, one in the front, one in the back. Everybody gets out all nicely dressed, but carrying, you know, the nice AKs and stuff and one well-dressed guy gets in the passenger seat, sits down, and throws some keys on the dash and says, those keys are to the truck behind us. That's your truck. It's a, it's a gift of the organization. We want you to accept the gift. And he says, no, I'm not going to accept your gift. I'm not going to work for you. And he said, well, we thought you would say that, so here's a picture of your wife and your daughter uh, taken five minutes ago. They're at this location, and we're going to give you 15 seconds to make your decision to be a friend of the organization or not, and you need to make your decision. And so he said, you know, what's he gonna do? He has to. Yeah. It's the exact same side on the U.S. side. Guys that come into this country, whether they come in legally or illegally, get into an area, whether it be Atlanta or Charlotte or Greenville or wherever else along that main drug corridor now, along 85 and 95, and they're given the opportunity to either assist the cartels with drug smuggling throughout the U.S. or their family members that are still in Mexico end up dead. So there's a lot of things that Americans don't know about, they don't think about, and unfortunately, most of it's not being reported by the media. 
because it, it makes Americans uncomfortable to know the things that are going on around us. You know, it makes us uncomfortable. Next time on Defending Our America. Even with the local gangs, when, when I was working gang stuff, they would tell us in interviews that they're not concerned with the court system. They're more concerned with having to deal with the cop on the corner, or getting knocked out by a cop or something, than they are the court system because they know that it's going to be a slap on the wrist. Even if they go do time, they're going to do good time and be able to walk out. It, it, really and it gives them street cred.